Hi, I'm Dan from Well Manager. We're here in our conference room in Hopewell, New Jersey. Uh, today I have with me Brandon Dora from DPS Well Pump Service. Brandon is one of our dealers in the North Jersey area. I just want to show this map of the United States just to try to uh, give you an understanding of why Brandon's participation is so important. If you look at the area of North Jersey where he's located, you can see a real concentration of pins. They are systems we've provided to, to dealers like uh, uh, DPS Pump Service to solve people's low yield well issues. Although we ship all over the United States, that northeast area really tends to have some of the, the worst problems when it comes to low yield wells. So. Brandon is here today to talk about a case study that he did over the last year on a residential well up in his area, which is Lake Hopakong, New Jersey. Brandon, I really appreciate you coming down today. I appreciate you participating in this, uh, in this case study video. So tell me a little bit about what DPS Pump Service does. Um, we are mainly a well pump service and installer company. Sure. So you do things like uh, pull pumps, replace water systems, deal with water conditioning issues. I mean, you touch everything that has to do with a residential or commercial water system. Yeah, everything from start to finish, from the drilling of the well to installing the lines, getting the pumps in, getting the system up and running, and then that's good. Good. So as a well pump service company, what kind of problems do you run into on a day in, day out basis? Our biggest thing is no waters, the well pumps themselves dying, or low pressures, or even wells that just don't produce enough water to satisfy a house, or um, the quality is not there. That's sure, the sure. Heavy treatment or something of that nature. So here at Well Manager, we refer to a, a well that's a low producer as what's called a low yield well. So if you're running out of water on a regular basis, even if it's only once or twice a year, you're faced with probably a low yield well. It may be most affected during a drought condition, uh, but at other times um, it it's, rears its ugly head on a regular basis. One of the things that's critical uh, that Brandon addresses uh, every day is the constant over pumping of the well. And we'll get into that a little bit more. So when, you're, when you come up against these kind of problems and you're at the customers, what's kind of the typical course of action for finding a solution? What are the steps you usually go through? Well, first, we usually make sure all the toilets aren't running, um, the water conditioning. That's a big one, leaky, <clears throat> leaky that's plumbing. Right. A lot of times that is our no water call. They have no water. Then they wake up in the morning, they have water. We find out that the water softener has ran all night, the backwash ran all night, or the timers are off. Or they had a toilet running and they had no idea because it's on the other side of the house or, yeah. you know, whatever. So you check the most obvious things first. We go through the most obvious progressions first. And then if that's not it, we start gauging how deep the well is, what size pump they have. And typically we have an idea of the area, if it's a good production area or if it's on the weaker side. And then we, we go from there to see if it's the, the well is the problem or if it's something... Sure. So you're utilizing things like well reports of when the well may have been drilled, if yeah. it's available. You're kind of listening to the customer's issues. You're checking your own history records if you had ever pulled the pump or installed something in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all that kind of stuff is what you're doing first step to solve the problem. Um, where does it lead to from there? If, if you figure out everything is working, mm -hmm. then where do we head? Well, if everything's working, the well's still not producing, then we start by how, how deep is the well. If it's a shallow well, if it's like 100, 200 feet and it's not producing, then typically you try and drill a new well, or if you can hydrofrack it, hydrofrack it if that's applicable. But if it's a deep well, say, you know, seven, 800 feet, and it's getting minimal gallons per minute coming in, um, then drilling a second well is typically not cost effective. So then sure. to something like a well manager or well watcher would be the most cost effective solution to the 
the issue. And that's something I tell all the customers when I talk to them. It's important to talk to your local well expert because he understands the geology of your area. He knows if well development, which is also referred to as fracking, if well development is a possibility of improving your well yield, if possibly drilling a new well or drilling your existing well deeper. So a, a well driller is going to have that kind of knowledge and be able to make that uh, decision with you in the best way to proceed. So you've investigated all the all the things that uh, you go through for for a solution. You get to the point where um, you may have even fracked the well, but production is still not where you want it. Kind of what's your what's your thought process at that point? Well, then the, the main issue is you, you can't have a, a big, a big shower. You can't run showers back to back. You can't run the house effectively so having a large collection system to be able to run more like a normal household right. is is the end goal so you know you size the house can it want to accommodate a system like this and if it can then that's the way you go. Okay and that's where well manager comes in and and we work with the experts to determine what's the best system for that particular customer's application. We might talk about multiple tanks, we might talk about larger pumps to accommodate more bathrooms. These are the discussions we go through with uh, with the dealers. So tell me specifically Brandon about the uh, case study that you did and kind of what 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 transpired there. So it was in Branchville, New Jersey. It's an area really known for shale, not typically great wells. A um, lot, lot of water, but a lot of quality issues. So the customer called with a low pressure issue. They couldn't run the shower and flush the toilet at the same time. The pressure would just die out and it would take quite a while for it to recover. Normal household, couple of adults, couple of kids? Yeah, normal, nice, right. nice size house, three floors, okay. um, three bathrooms. So. Initially, we thought maybe the filters were clogged, um, but they assured us. Portisoft told us that the you know, filtration is good. It's that's all brand new. So we assumed that there was a, a hole down the well or something with the well. And then upon investigating, we found that the static was down around 300 feet, and the well pump was set at 750. So the static level is one of the questions we always talk about with customers. That gives us an indication if we know the well depth. If we know the static water level, that's the from the surface down to the water level, that tells us how much stored water is in the ground, which is a critical part of understanding your well's capability and production. So you had like a 700 foot well mm -hmm. with a static down at where? Around 300 feet. Wow, okay. And the drill records showed that when it was drilled, um, the static was hanging out around 25, 30 feet. So we know we lost- From the surface, a lot of, so we yeah. Lost over 200 feet or 300 feet rather, in the course of 17 years. Wow. From the day the, drill, the well was drilled. Originally. Okay. So after going through all that, then um, we decided to first frack the well, and when we pulled the pump out, um, the pump was clogged solid with iron bacteria. So that was also attributing to the, the pressure issue. The pump just could not pump. The, the galvanized pipe had holes all throughout it, so we changed the pump, the pipe, the wire, everything. After the hydro frack, um, we installed the well watcher, it worked great for about a week, and then they called back that the tank wasn't filling. So we had to go pull the pump out just to check it. And that new pump set up, you had to had to pull right. Got clogged solid with the iron bacteria from everything that broke loose at right. the hydrofrac. So then, after speaking with the drillers who did the hydrofrac for us, they told us the area is pretty good for water, and they felt the hydrofrac very worked very well. So we decided to raise the pump from 700 up to 500 to try and get away from where that dirty water and all that iron bacteria was coming from. And then uh, the customer called back and told us that the water quality has completely changed, that the sulfur smell is gone. Um, there's minimal iron now, but the water did get hard, but hard water is easier to deal with than a sulfur smell or heavy iron bacteria that clogs your pumps, your plumbing, just clogs basically everything it gets in contact with. So one of the things that I recommend when customers do hydrofrac is although they do typically get a well improvement, and that's critical, that's why we're doing it, they still have to think about managing their well. Yeah. So that's an important part of what well manager helps them to do. So really the purpose of any one of our systems is to, is to no longer 
gulp water out of the ground because that affects that stored water level. It affects exposing the well to air, which allows the iron bacteria to plate out, which allows a lot of things to happen that are detrimental to the well. So we want to keep the well as full as possible all the time. So it does require a management system. So we had a well watcher on that well. We stopped the process of gulping water. We began to sip water out of the ground. So as a result, the static water level rose, which allowed the pump to be raised up, which is a fantastic thing. Gets that pump out of the strata of iron and minerals and gets it up into an area of better water. And that water is stratified throughout the well, right? Just by, by pressure of the well. And that's why keeping the well full is important. And the result after a year has been what? Um, they couldn't be more happy with the overall job, the whole, whole setup. Because Fantastic. They, they can do multiple showers at a time. She hasn't done laundry at her house in over 10 years. She can finally do laundry at her house again. Clothes don't smell anymore. She Fantastic. How about the, the pressure? So we've increased the volume. How about the pressure the in the pressure home? pressure is what they really love, that they can do multiple showers, multiple things, and run like a normal house. Fantastic. Fantastic. Brandon, and that's what we hear from every customer that installs one of our systems. They can't get over the fact that they've lived with the inconvenience of a low yield well for so long. And there has always been a solution out there that they just didn't know about until they've happened upon well manager. So folks, I would encourage you, if you're, if you're in the listening area for, for North Jersey, to talk to, to Brandon about a solution for your low yield well. Uh, he's going to go through the process of investigating all facets of your water system to make sure everything is working right. I'm Dan at Well Manager. I'm happy to talk through that process also. And again, you don't have to live with the inconvenience of no water anymore. We have a solution for you. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to talking to you. Brandon, thank you for your participation. Thank you.